every entrepreneur is being told that they have to have content. But if you are not a full-time content creator, like if you're not an active creator, thinking about creating content is like at the bottom of your priority list in terms of running your business. Because, I mean, you know, you're running a business. You have so many other things you have to worry about. Adding another thing on top of that just seems like uh, such a drain. And then, so you so you, you you take everybody's advice and you listen to Gary Vee and you're like, okay, fine, let me go create content. So then you like invest in some equipment and you invest in some studio space or whatever. But then you sit down in front of a camera for the first time and you're like, what do I talk about? And yeah. it's it's frustrating because you're probably really good at what you do. You know, you pro- like everybody probably knows that you're pretty good at what you do, but it's a completely and entirely different skill set to sit down in front of a camera and speak not only intelligently and like in and, and, and be able to keep one constant flow of thought, you know, going throughout the the um the time that you're filming, but also have it be actionable, practical, inspiring, motivational. For sure. And and then so if you if you aren't naturally good at that, which most people aren't, then you have to have a bunch of prep time leading up to it. And you're coming up with these outlines and, you know, let's talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. And it's like, or you have to hire a team and spend a ton of money on other people who are going to help you get that content out of yourself. And so for me, it's like starting a podcast is like the most simple way to have an engine that drives the rest of your content across all of your social channels. Um, So like you and I can sit down and have an hour long podcast episode where we talk about whatever from beginning stage entrepreneurship to the nitty gritty details of running ad campaigns or like whatever we want to talk about. And then you or your team can take the entire, you know, thing that we do here for an hour and they can pull, you know, a dozen, two dozen different 30 second, 60 second clips, reels, YouTube shorts, you know, seven minute clips for YouTube or, or, or 30 second clips for TikTok or, uh, or, or, uh, four points that you can outline and put into a blog post or send it into a newsletter or write into, or, or throw in your email copy. Like there's just so many things that come from it and it doesn't require you to sit down and do all that crazy stuff that I was talking about before, just a casual conversation. Um, and then it checks off all the other boxes that are the reason to be creating content to begin with. The reason to create content to begin, begin with is top of funnel activity. It brings in more attention and awareness into your brand, right? But if attention comes into your brand and uh, y- you know the attention's coming into a leaky bucket, then that attention is going to fall out immediately and you're not going to have as good retention, which means you have to get more attention so that you can increase your retention. Um, but if you repair the holes in the, uh, repair the holes in the bucket with stuff like authority and credibility and borrowed association and things like that, like from interviews where like people are watching this interview right now, I guarantee you somebody watching this interview doesn't know who you are and somebody watching this interview doesn't know who I am. But now both of those people know who both of us are because we're sitting down and doing this collaboration together talking about all these things. So people that are in your audience are going to see me for the first time. People in my audience are going to see you for the first time. And if they like what we have to say, they're going to actually go follow us. And so we get this little, we get this little, you know, injection of clout, credibility, authority, as well as a content engine that drives the rest of the channels that we do. And then on top of all of that, the, the network that I've been able to build in the last five years from doing my show is one that I never thought I would be able to have. It's just, there's something about hosting something. So like, if you're not going to host a podcast, host an event, host a a meetup, host a dinner, like be a host and bring people into your world and see what happens. And so like the podcast is such a fantastic asset to be able to share with people with whom you just want to have some sort of a conversation or connection with. And then those relationships kind of build organically from there. So there's several reasons. And I just gave, you know, three or four of the top ones, man, there's, there's so much sauce right there, man. Let's, let's dissect some of that. So I totally agree with you because I was that guy. I was that guy that dedicated a lot, a lot of time and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to getting really good at my craft, direct sales, been doing that for the last seven, eight years, you know, semi-successful, doing pretty well. And just like you said, seeing the 21st century and seeing everything going on in line, I'm like, I got to monetize. I got to monetize personal brand, personal brand, personal brand. So I'm like, all right, what do I do? Well, I'm going to go make content. Thankfully, I have more resources than most people starting out in entrepreneurship. So I can outsource. I can, you know, pay for a production team and do all those things. But even for myself sitting here, you know, one or two hours a week, just filming, watching a camera and talking about whatever I'm talking about, it got the job done, but it just wasn't super enjoyable for me. So much less enjoyable. So much less enjoyable, not as authentic. And to your point, you don't get that collaboration aspect. And, you know, the thing that really... 
I guess sparked my my curiosity when it came to podcasts is literally what you said. The power dynamic is so different. You know, I think I you even you either told me this or I heard it on one of your shows. You know, if you go ask, you know, someone making 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar net worth to sit down and pick his brain, he's gonna be like, sure. You know, here's my secretary, 20 G's, 30 minutes. Yeah, right? Right, right. But if you have a super successful show, as you know, yeah. we'll get into with you, you literally can ask these people, create a win win and have that power and that leverage where they're willing to sit down with you, connect with you for 30, 45 minutes and share some of their secrets to success. And it, the only difference, it's not because of your credibility. It's the credibility behind the thing that you built. Just having the platform. Just, yeah, having, just the platform. having the platform is the asset. Dude, the first times I realized this was like, You'll, you'll see this, you'll see this, this dynamic uh, play out in real time. If you, if you go out to a bunch, bunch of events or you see people that are really high level interacting with each other. Um, the first time I kind of realized this was with uh, Lewis Howes because the, the, when this was back in 2017, when I was first getting started with my show, I went to this event and it was like a red carpet type event, you know, and there's a bunch of like really, you know, high level entrepreneurs and a couple, you know, um, more like closer to celebrity status type people. And, and it was incredible to me because I knew personally some of the people that were like fangirling over Lewis Howes, whose businesses were tremendously more valuable than Lewis's. Mm. They had more money in the bank. They like had more quote unquote kind of material success or even entrepreneurial success. But because Lewis had this draw to him from this, you know, kind of platform celebrity type status because of his podcast, people still wanted to be around him more than they cared to be around the person that was running a hundred million dollar plus business, even though Lewis has not hit those types of numbers. And maybe he has now, I don't know, but, um, but I knew back then he, you know, was, he basically had a podcast and he did like education and courses and stuff and he wasn't hurting for money, you know, but like I said, he wasn't, he wasn't running a nine figure business or, or, or starting a billion dollar unicorn. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just, he was, he was a podcaster and it was like one of the first times that clicked to me, like there's like, there's this, this kind of celebrity style draw that happens if, if you have a show that has any sort of like level of success on it. Absolutely. And so having that as an asset to be able to exchange in conversations with people and provide value to another party with whom you would not be able to provide value otherwise is, um, uh, is one of those, you know, in, uh, like intangibles of having a show that people don't talk about or recognize. Totally. I think it was Grant Cardone that says attention is the most valuable commodity in today's age. And, yeah. you know, it's so true. You know, you look at, you know, Logan and Jake Paul, you look at, you know, the full send and I watch these shows, I'm entertained by them. And, you know, I look at it and I'm like, man, I know so many people who, you know, it feels like they can facilitate a lot more value, but because they've mastered the art of attention and grabbing people, you know, their show has been able to catapult them to insane amount of success and right. being able to be in rooms with Elon Musk, Drake, and, and all these superstars right. because of the leverage they've been able to create from, you know, gathering that attention. Other than podcast, Travis, are there any other really good ways for the young entrepreneur trying to get going, trying to, you know, take his offline business and maybe get a little bit more online presence that he can start or at least dabble in to start creating that level of attention? Sure. I mean, you can do it really on any social platform. It's just a matter of like, if you don't have any money and you're short on time as well, and you're like just trying to get into the game, then pick one thing and go all in on that one thing. I, like I said, I like podcasting because it didn't require me to learn a bunch of other skills. Um, like we're, we're sitting here in like a home studio with, you know, thousands of dollars in equipment around us and all that stuff. When I started my show though, I had a $60 USB microphone and an upside down laundry basket for a desk. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like this, like it does not, you don't have to have this like crazy professional setup. You know, audio editing is a little bit easier than video editing. So the barrier to entry is a little bit lower. Um, you do have to more produce a, a show uh, and, and you do need to be consistent, but that's going to be, you know, the same advice across any platform that you try to attack. Um, so that's why I like podcasting because it, it can just generate, it can generate all the ideas for you. And then you can take that and you can, and you can record a 30 second video and put it on TikTok if you want to. Like if you're just on a, a rant on a podcast for 30 minutes and you're like, oh, that was a really good piece, but I didn't record the video because I was only doing audio. Okay, we'll take that one piece and listen to it a couple times and then recreate it on video. And now you have a 
you know, TikTok video. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can start on any platform, just pick one though, that you're going to really crush, you know, like, uh, if you want to, if you want to build an email newsletter, uh, subscriber base, do that, start a blog, fine, do that, uh, start on, uh, uh, video shorts, which would just be YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook reels, just do shorts, you know what I mean? Just do YouTube content or just do podcasting. Um, pick one thing if you're limited on time and resources and get really good at that one thing. 